What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Glory Podcast. My name is Dory Renata, and I'm your host. And today, I am joined with my friends again, like yes. most of the time. Yeah. Mia Wright and Darrell Wright. Mia, you're the president of the NBWA. Mm -hmm. And Darrell, you've been in the league NBA for how many years? Uh, 11 sport? years. 11 years. And my co-host, Miss Diddy. I want to say that her name is Mrs. Mia Mrs. Wright. Mrs. Mia Wright, oh, thank you for correcting me. Sorry, thanks. She's a she's a, she's a, Mia Mia she's a married she's a she's a can I introduce you, please? Sorry. All right, so uh <laughs> let me let me pull her shit up to do it the right way. <laughs> Nash, <laughs> National Lifestyle Manager for Duce, Miss Diddy. Wait, thank you. Congratulations on your new job. She just got a new job. Yes, yeah, why you gotta say like that? She's got a new job. The Duce is sponsored by her. So thank you. She got a new venture that she's working on. We, we, we proud of you. And she's the most busiest woman in Hollywood, or she just don't answer half of my phone calls. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of Miss Diddy, um, you know, a lot of people remember you and you got your start, like, back in the day in front of people on, like, the Kanye West. Uh, what was the song? The Kanye Workout Plan, right? The Ghetto Shit. Uh, and so you were one of the few uh, black people in Wyoming that went, yeah, I got your ass, because you went. You went. Okay, yeah. And um, I just, how do you feel about what he said? You supported it, or did you just you know, go for the free flight? Well, or, see, how, do, see, what, how do you feel about this whole debacle? I'm letting him get it Because everybody off. wants to know the people that went, because everybody was like, oh, like, oh, we against Kanye, right. you know, and had they offered my ass a free flight to what Wyoming, I was going. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and my friend <laughs> called me and got mad at me for saying that, but how did you feel? Did you feel a little opposed to, to see, go at first? I want to be clear about my stance with a couple things. I don't, agree with the direction and what and what Kanye is saying at all as it relates to like Trump and like just where the world is. I, I don't I don't agree with it. But the difference is be, him being a friend of mine, I wanted to look him in his face and see what's like really going on. So it's a little different for me than like everybody else that wanted to just go for a party. And also mental health is real. It is real. You know, it's a disease. It's not even just that it's like Something it's it's you can make fun of it, but it's not funny, mm -hmm. you know. And I have it in my family, and I'm very sensitive to it. So it was different for me. I didn't mm -hmm. go loudly. I wasn't mm -hmm. like I got pictures with Kanye, but I wasn't like, yo, it's Kanye. Right. Supporting the album, I said nothing about the album because yeah. that's what right. it wasn't. It wasn't about. What did that you think about the album after hearing it and kind of being up there and experiencing? I it thought the way. album was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a bit biased to him as an artist uh -huh. because I believe in his artistry. Right. And I believe in his genius, and I believe that he's ahead of his time. Uh -huh. yeah. So no, I don't agree with those things. I am a black woman. Mm -hmm. I have a black mother. I have black brothers, and you know, I think that it's a dangerous time in mm -hmm. society for him to make the comments in which he makes. I also know him, and I believe it's, it's hard. I'm not excusing it, mm -hmm. but somewhere in his mind, this is going to make sense, sense later, right, and it's right, going right. to come full circle, and right. that doesn't make it okay. Uh -huh. But I just... That's how he is in marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mia, how do, you, how do you feel about everything that happened with that? And what's your stance on even, like, supporting him, you know? I'm not going to lie. I definitely streamed the album. Okay. Um, and again, listening from more of an artist's perspective um, and understanding the picture that he's painting, I kind of always been a Kanye mm -hmm. fan, but also, yeah. like, I could understand his intricate thought process yeah. and, like, mm -hmm. you know... That's a tough part. The puzzle. The puzzle. Mm -hmm. I get the puzzle, and not everybody gets it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really a piece of art, right? It's, like, where he is in his space in life, going through his mental health um, discovery uh -huh. and, right. and releasing that. Uh -huh. um, so I get it on that level, but, like Diddy said, it's just a time right now that's very sensitive for mm -hmm. our culture. Mm -hmm. And he's a huge representative of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to go and parade MAGA hats and say, well, no, we're equal. And no, slavery's a choice. No, it just, not. it doesn't make sense at this juncture for us. Right. I would expect him to be a little bit more um, sensitive and um, responsible. Responsible. Yeah, responsible. Can I say this really quick? I know yeah. you want to get on, but I, I want to say this really quick. The most... The, the most dangerous piece of it for me and what I'm really afraid of is almost not so much publicly that it was said, mm -hmm. but that that level of conversation has been had in private with white people. Right. Uh -huh. That's what's scary to me yeah. because right. to white people, Kanye is the savior of rap. He's the rap guy. It's mm -hmm. not 
Jay Z, if that makes sense. Because right, right, white mm-hmm. people could be like, oh, he sold drugs and he's yeah, yeah, just yeah. a thug that means They relate business. to Kanye. They relate. They uh-huh. think that Kanye is like the top. So him saying that in private, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's what like made me cringe when he said it. I was like, oh, he's been at a day- dinner table and he said that before. Right, yeah, for sure. Right, <laughs> for sure. Right. It's kitchen table talk that got brought to the streets. You uh-uh. know, it's supposed Ooh. to just be. Uh-huh. No, but okay. I mean, that's what you call it. <laughs> that's a good Supposed like to, We all talk about things, yeah. uh, race and all. I mean, I think if somebody heard some of the things that I might say, they might say he's a bigot or whatever as well, because mm-hmm. in frustration, we do say those things. That's true. Um, and everybody's sensitive about a lot, mm-hmm. especially like the Me Too movement and you being, you know, a, a woman leader. Mm-hmm. But what I want to ask Darrell is, dude, like, you happen to have been in this league for so long and kind of stayed pretty unscathed when it came down to... The dangers of people taking advantage. So, example, mm-hmm. now with these younger players in social media, uh, they get caught doing everything, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, whether it be drugs or whether it be, you know, infidelity, whatever it, the case may be, they get caught. Were you kind of schooled at the beginning by the older cats on how to handle these types of things? And do you see these younger dudes and you see them making a lot of mistakes when it comes down to their public image? A hundred percent. I just... You know, me and my uh, close friend, Quentin Richardson, we always uh-huh. talk on the fact that we so happy that social media wasn't as mm-hmm. big right. back then. Mm-hmm. Because, right. like, yeah. with these young... <laughs> right, yeah, 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 <laughs> sure. So what these young kids are doing now is stuff that dudes been doing for years. Absolutely. And if you go back to, like, the 80s and the early 90s, those dudes was even doing way, way right. worse True. stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. right. it's just the fact that now everybody is two or three clicks away from, you know, mm-hmm. being nosier right. in somebody's business. So, uh, you know, with me having a younger brother now uh-huh. at mm-hmm. a good age, right. single, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I just try to stay on him. Like, man, be careful. Right. And I'll also be like, dang, bro, all these people on Instagram, I don't know how, yeah. you know what I mean? You can, you know, stay cool, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of these dudes be all in them DMs and everything. It's a lot of I mean, because it's, I mean, you know, you don't have to go to the club anymore. No. You can't really even meet nobody in the club, no. you know, and, and, and right in your face, especially in DeLon's situation, your younger brother, he got it right here, he's new, versus, you know, you and Mia, you guys are a little bit older, right. you, you guys are showing your marriage on Instagram, so, I mean, of course, I'm sure crazy shit happens in everybody's DMs, but when it comes to these younger players... Yeah. I just feel like it's no protocol right. with how they handle things. Because yeah. being in Hollywood, I'm sure you've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Um, what advice do you have for the new generation that these cats that are just getting signed on how to maintain their public image, but still they're young, you know? That's right. Right. Gotta have a yeah, you got to live a little bit, but, you know, I got to understand that now when something go, you know, on the internet is is there forever. You know, mm-hmm. I could go back and see stuff, bad mistakes from years ago, you Me know, too. myself. So Me too. I just, you know, my my best advice is just to be careful what you yeah. post and just understand that's gonna be there forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So And not even be careful what you post, but the conversations that you're having in these DMs, Completely. the text messages that you're like, not everything has to be transcripted. I right, just feel like, but this. also understand that you chose to do this type of life. Right. So yeah. there's sacrifices that come with this, responsibilities that come with it. And if not, then go have a great job at Walmart and right. nobody cares. Right. Right. But <laughs> you chose to work hard to get to the position at where, where you are. Mm-hmm. You have to understand what that is. Right. Right. It's and take business. that serious. It's mm-hmm. a business. Sure. Yeah. And I think that social media for a lot of businesses, it just, like, Mm. blurs the lines. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. uh we were just talking about Mm -hmm. this before we started the podcast. Like, me even separating Mm -hmm. my personal self from, like, my corporate self and, like, how that works. And then my artistic self. Like, how do I paint this picture on social media? Do I have to paint it? Like, do I have to be that vulnerable? Um, It's an interesting time, just in general, for society Mm -hmm. and learning how to be responsible Mm -hmm. via social media. Like, it's... I, I think that we're in the middle because we got to see the old mm-hmm. school way right. of mm-hmm. right. real celebrities. Yeah, right. Right. Thank God that we got <laughs> to see what God. real celebrities <laughs> right. look like and shit. No cameras. Oh, oh my God. Because I don't even know who's fucking famous no more. Right. What? Because Please, they be coming up to me talking about, famous. oh yeah, she got a million followers in the club. I and, don't care and I don't You know, know, I go to a red carpet. I didn't work my ass off and shit. <laughs> right. And sis with 16 million followers <laughs> with a fat ass <laughs> getting on the carpet before me and shit. So... I'm just trying to, you know, we, we we got to see the the Whitney's, the Michaels, the Grace, the Michael Jordans, and then mm-hmm. now 
you know, we're in an era where we looking at these, I don't want to say young, but we look at these young motherfuckers, and it's mm-hmm. like, Hello. what are y'all doing? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, I, I saw uh, recently, uh, I the, the, a situation that happened with an NBA player cheating on his girlfriend, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. I, y'all know who I'm talking about, what? but it was just, oh, okay. it's just, just it's just, no, for me, for me, for me, it's not something that people don't do, mm-hmm. but it's almost like, do y'all, do they not know that people are watching? Sometimes right. you could you know? be in the middle of it and you don't know that somebody over there yonder That's is true. watching yeah. with a zoom in on the phone. But it's yeah. like almost, it's like, I can't even cheat in peace though. Cause no, sir, like, no, straight up. That's I'm really not, that that's, that's no. That it, 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 what you do in your personal life is your yeah. business. Right? Yeah. So do we do we also feel like there should be more the, laws for Instagram and stuff like that to, to protect so. people's I think privacy? privacy? I think there's no there privacy. should be, but I, I but I think that I, I think that it's it's like a thin because I was gonna mention a situation I went through, but it's a it's a mm. fine line because police officer told me before that the worst thing was when we started questioning, like freedom of, not freedom of speech, but like we need to be able to do what we want to do internet wise. Mm -hmm. And police were kind of like, let's not do that. Let's not Mm -hmm. do that because Mm -hmm. now you can have a stalker and it's like you, the police are like, well, did he kill you? You're like, well, no, but can you figure out? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So a lot of, uh, I feel like a lot of those girls and and those people, they really want fame, right? For Mm -hmm. sure. So Mm -hmm. now we live in a world where reality TV is like beyond oversaturated. I remember when Mm -hmm. I first started reality TV, we was like the only black reality show. (laughs) So that was it. And that's why we was popping because it was like, that was it it to watch. Mm -hmm. So now with it being so oversaturated, I know you've probably been... um, offered a few reality mm-hmm. shows yeah. and, and and as a couple together. How do y'all feel about that that space? Would y'all dive into it or, or no? <laughs> I'm off that. The real say no. I'm off that. won't be seeing me on this, this next season of basketball. No. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> they just recently <laughs> stopped hitting me up. Really? Like from season one from season, up yeah, until maybe like two you. seasons ago. They're like, uh-huh. okay, she's never <laughs> not going to do right. it. <laughs> um, but... I think that, and this goes back to Darrell and, you know, his big bro and mentor, Q Rich, yeah. Quinn right. Richardson, and him saying, like, look, just look at the relationships in reality For television sure. and how they pan out. Right. Um, it's usually not so successful. Uh-huh. Um, but that's not to say I would never say I'm not going to do something. Like, I'm very a in-the-moment type of person. Yeah. If an opportunity presents itself that makes sense for me and my family mm-hmm. or that we feel comfortable with, you know, that's that's something to be determined. Um, but we definitely feel a responsibility about the message mm-hmm. that we would be, right. you know, sharing with the world. But it's also Absolutely. that you're from Los Angeles. We're from Los Angeles. Right. And this is what we know. We've seen right. it all. So it's not reality. an exciting right. like, no. thing. Yeah. You were on tour before right. you had a driver's license. It's right. like, yeah. what are we yeah. even... Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, right. when you're born, when you're from L.A. and mm-hmm. you, this is your background, mm-hmm. it's normal to us. We grew up looking at palm trees mm-hmm. and looking right. at right. the celebrities and all. People, that was yeah. what was a part of our family in our culture so mm-hmm. you're not gonna you guys for sure are not gonna be prone to hop in something no mm-hmm. because it's not an excitement no, right it's like all. does this make sense like you said does for my family for and for what the message that, that we right. want to share yeah. hey, Darrell, i have a question for you actually i just thought about it do you think that social media has changed uh basketball because the fans have mm. such a way to be in contact with their question. opinion who needs to be traded mm-hmm. who don't who we sick of oh, it's so much of an opinion that's that's heard and visible now do you think it's changed a lot of decisions up 100% there? man wow that's crazy just because you know going back to this last series with uh Golden State and Cleveland you know uh-huh. people were killing Ty Lue you know what I mean because he wasn't playing Rodney Hood uh-huh. so they like why you don't play Rodney Hood why you don't play Rodney Hood in the next game, he played Rodney Hood. So wow. it's like, this man didn't make a coaching decision. He mm-hmm. made a social media decision. Right, that's true, yeah. You know what true. I mean? So it's just wow. crazy how much social media plays, you know, a in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And even, yeah. like, on the business side of it, you don't, you no longer have to be the franchise player of the team to mm-hmm. have the opportunities of a franchise player. Like, right. you can be the pop in social media player. Well, because if, cause if exactly. you look good uh, yeah, and you go to the right fly. clubs and you mm-hmm. high, you hook up with the right, the right celebrity, girl, the right. then next mm-hmm. thing you know, you out here. <laughs> yeah. So, Bobby. but was it, but was it not, it wasn't like that when you first started because no. you were drafted in 2004 yep. to yep. the Heat. So, I can imagine, you were what, 18? 18. Wow. 
So I can imagine young being that young. <laughs> you like, know. damn. You know, I just, many things just went through yeah, my head. Yeah. I said, damn. Yeah, and Miami. Uh, From LA to Miami. I was in freshman student class and shit. But, you know, that was a different time mm -hmm. in basketball. Was it like, were you appalled and kind of just like, wow, like this is my life? Was it a big mm. shocker? Because I feel like a lot of new players, right? Them niggas be getting ready two years before they out. They be on the right. gram. They already got 200,000 followers. Right. So they exactly. already yeah. famous. Yeah. Exactly. And they already got an, uh, they wearing endorsement it's shit and doing so all of that. Yeah. So they got to, to watch you guys and right. they know how to do it. So before they even walk in the door, we know who they are. We know the balls and all of the other kids. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when you got in, was it a new world for you? How did that, how did that feel being that you hadn't seen that? before like they get to see it man it was crazy because uh right before miami drafted my drafted me my agent asked me you know i'm there nervous as hell got uh -huh. family and friends all around mm -hmm. and it's like miami just called they want to know if you can handle miami i'm like yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but right. mind you you know i'm from la man the beverly center was far to me I'm yeah. from right, 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 right. <laughs> so you talking about miami okay. i don't know nothing about right. miami okay yeah. so you know i'm like yeah so i like i said i know nothing about miami i get to miami the first day i'm just looking around like it's crazy this is why they asked me if I can right. go to Miami. And your bank account is more than it's probably ever been at that oh, time. Oh, for sure. I'm mm -hmm. straight out of high school, you know, coming from an inner city home and stuff like that. So, you know, <laughs> that was, yeah, hell yeah. Oh, so, I, but I live, yeah. I live my best life, though, yeah. in Miami. For, yeah. Before I met me, yeah, as, you should, 100%. Yeah. as you should. As you should. And look, and now, <laughs> now, look life, thank, thank you for the transit. That was a good transition, yeah. Darrell. <laughs> so, speaking of you guys, like, uh -huh. I know, I know. I, I know y'all story because, okay. you know, I, I've been around you guys and I was lucky enough and blessed enough to be at your wedding, which was like, oh, I always I say, oh, I'll okay, say it was sorry. the funnest night of my life. It like, was. honestly, like, I asked oh, Mia, I said, can you get married again? I called you one day. Yeah, I said, can you get good. married again? Because that it shit was, was lit. The, was the so food was good. good. YG it performed. Good. You know? YG. I yeah, shed a tear or two and shit. You lay like half the way I before. shed a tear for sure. I mean, I was just like, damn, like, I'm never getting married because I ain't gonna make the top this. No, sure. um, but <laughs> you, so you guys met when y'all were young, uh -huh. which is crazy because yeah, what I do love about y'all before I go into it is y'all still had that fun young energy. Like, Perfect, I can hang out with y'all. And also, y'all not an annoying ass couple. So I don't, if she right. say Darrell coming, I'm like, cool, for sure. Right. It's not bad. Right. So, <laughs> you know, annoying. tell us a little bit about how y'all met Mia mm -hmm. and, you know, how did that. How did, the, how, you got a basket, how did you get an NBA player? Tell well, us now, about that. How did you get her? Uh, first of all, let's take it all the way back. Okay. Ooh, who had the first career? You did. Okay. Oh, okay. come on now. Wait, hold on. Hold Listen, on. Hold on. Some respect Monica, on Monica, 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 Monica. Okay. A little bit okay. of respect. So tell, tell, us, tell, us about, respect. tell us about your upbringing and how'd you get where you are now. <laughs> I'm always yeah, having to put some respect on your name. You know? I mean, just a little tiny Well, I was going to get there I mean? at the end, but okay. you know. No, you no, no we don't even have to go all the way back, but it's a part of the story. So you were a young signed funny. artist. Young yeah. signed artist, okay. 13, RCA record deal, yeah. before dark. <laughs> Damn. I mean, y'all was both making way more money than all of us yeah, here before the age of 21. Though, like, like, <laughs> it's something to kind of be proud of as Very. you get older. And, and now it seems just so easy to be like, you know, upload your music and right. overnight sensation. Right. Um, there's, I know a lot of people that have put in years and years and years. I've seen growth in people in the game. So I respect, you know, those right. people. But back then, like, I mean, I was in that group starting at age nine. We wow. weren't signed till I was 13. Because it's artist uh -huh. development back it's then. It's artist development, right. right? And even at 13, the album didn't come out till I was 16. 16. Mm. So, and they spent a lot of money okay. <laughs> on developing the group. Right. Um, but it was an accomplishment to be signed. Name. Yeah. yeah. It was an accomplishment, right? Yeah. Like, woo! And, and not even like I made it, but wow, we're worthy enough to be on this stage. Right. Um, and then touring with Christina Aguilera and Destiny's Child, like, that's something to be proud of. Absolutely, and, and then yeah. this era where people, young age, too, at a young sure. age, you know, people like to clown and be like, oh, that was this or whatever, whatever. But no, like, people can't take away your accomplishments. No. Right, absolutely. You know, the, the path that you paved in your life. Absolutely. So, so you actually, you were that, popping in L.A. too. She Let's not forget. You, know, you was popping out here. Y'all must have, you must have hit him up to say, yeah, say no. this. No, <laughs> she did. No, I heard about her. I heard about her. I heard, 
I did. I heard Me and Lysia were curly hair, and she was not in a bad way. But you know, you were in a music group, and y'all were doing things that other kids your age were doing. There's social circles from growing up, Hollywood auditioning. Like we all know each other in this thing, right? But anyway, apparently, (laughs) Garota did not know me. (laughs) Not at all. According to the legend, (laughs) 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 he swears he never heard of me in my life. Oh yeah, never ever. Never ever. Saw a picture of me, knew all my friends. Uh I mean, we did both grow up in LA. Uh-huh. Did you know access. about him? I did not. I feel like they oh, so both So you lying. like, so how you don't know about me, but you tell <laughs> right. me. Because I didn't go losing her. I didn't really know nobody Ooh, else. Uh-huh. She but you got to understand, I, I went to losing her. That was out of my uh, district or whatever you want to say. I just went there because of sports. Mm-hmm. I went to Washington. That's my home school. Definitely didn't know. You but. definitely didn't know. That's <laughs> the hood Shout is the hood. Right. I was from the west side. Okay. Like, I was from Madeira. Where, 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 where do you think Imperial Western is? No, it's not the west side. No, you are not the west side. Imperial Western. That's Central. That would be in the okay. south Central. Okay, I know nothing about any of this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Three, three, three people I don't know. know. We can break this down. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, rewind it all back. Okay. He saw a picture of me in a group of friends where he knew all of the friends. And he's like, who's that? Now, the picture... This is what's really funny. So UCLA seniors have something called the panty run. Uh-huh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. I think I heard about that before. It's something called the panty run. And so a couple of friends of mine were graduating. Uh-huh. And I was at the panty run. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Running in panties. Running in the panties. And we took a nice little ratchet picture. Okay. 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 This is the, so thought in real life it before thought on the ground. All right. There you go. Yeah. So basically, if y'all was that, that age in today's society and you would have saw that picture, it would have still Correct. went down. Cool. Correct. It's like 2,000 likes. Things, things don't change. Right. You know, I said it's like 2,000 likes if it was a Oh, shit. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> That's it? Right. I feel like we could have gotten maybe like 3K. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, sees the picture. Who's this? That's Mia. Who's Mia? You don't know Mia? Absolutely not. Long story <laughs> short, this is when AIM was out. Yep. Changing AIM uh-huh. names. This was the year. Kick, huh? This was the year that the Heat won the championship. Okay. Um, I didn't even know the Miami Heat was a team. Like I'm from the West, Lakers, you right, know, right, right. State, like right. Clippers. Um, anyway, so yeah, we we were hitting up each other on AIM and <laughs> I was like, yo, you got to call me. This is weird. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know who you are. Did you we have your black flip phone at this point? Are you I think I had that you? pink Verizon. Oh, okay. Remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, cool. when, so when you guys started dating <laughs> uh-huh. and then things got serious, mm-hmm. I know you ev- you eventually moved, moved out to, to Miami, Miami, right, yeah. at one point in time. Mm-hmm. And you were stepping from being an entertainment kid right. who kind of was involved with... I know at one point in time you told me that you were up to be on one of the Cheetah Girls, right? So oh, like yeah. early earlier mm-hmm. on, right? So it, you were doing like all those big Disney Nickelodeon auditions, right? Mm-hmm. So you went from that and having a record deal to you know, and things and music had stopped for you or slowed down for you or, or things changed. You mm-hmm. know how groups things happen. Mm-hmm. And then you go into Darrell's life, mm-hmm. and then Darrell's life is large at the time. So yeah. he's playing. How did you remain Mia? Um, in, in that, or did sometimes? Because I know a lot of women dating a lot of powerful players. And we got you, bro. They gonna get that deep. <laughs> but but how did you remain you? And also, do what advice do you have for you know young wives mm-hmm. and stuff like that that come out and their players have these large careers? Right. Um, I think because of my background in entertainment, uh-huh. I knew what I was stepping into. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that. I wasn't, we weren't trying to rush into marriage. I was right. like, well, and I was pregnant at the time. That's mm-hmm. why That's I moved to mean. Miami. Right. Um, and I said, well, let's give this thing a try, uh-huh. you know, and let's see how it works out. But I knew we had both a lot of growing up to do. Yeah. Um, and at a lot of moments, I did feel lost. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, what what's happening with me now? Like, what right. am I about to do? Right. Um, I ended up, you know, we we established the D-Right Way Foundation, uh-huh. so I got into yeah. philanthropy. Um but there definitely were moments of like, okay, what's happening with Mia? And mm-hmm. still to this day mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. you know, I have to like prioritize my passion projects and not right. just things that kind of are handed off to me. Um, even with the National Basketball Wives Association, right. that takes up a lot of my time. And I love what I do. Uh-huh. Um, but there's still projects that I want to get into. I have nothing to do with right. any of that. Um, advice to young girls is to, and this is advice that I've always told young women that I cross paths with, paths with, is that 
take this opportunity to mm-hmm. literally do whatever you want to do. Right. Because not only do you have the financial means, right. you have the time. Right. There's time. You ain't got um, nothing but time. And to be out of your <laughs> husband's or boyfriend's hair right. and doing your own thing, yeah. you're going to attract that attention that you want for him that for you're sure. probably not yeah. getting sometimes because yeah. you could be a little bit too clingy because yeah. you don't have anything going on in this right. random city. Um, so just keep following your dreams. There's a balance. If your man loves you and respects you, it'll work out. And that's what I was going to get to. What I think is, uh, was so dope about y'all two, you guys have started clothing lines together and done a lot of mm-hmm. business things together. But Darrell, you've always been really supportive of Mia's quirky ways. Yes. <laughs> okay. She's a very yes. quirky yes. person. Right. But Mia's a, a creative person. You're mm-hmm. creative and you've always been supportive. Has that always been easy? Because some guys, I feel like it has. The answer's got to be yes. But I feel like some guys are insecure easy. about letting their women, when they in a position of power, mm-hmm. do their own thing, mm-hmm. you know, get their work. How, how were you, what was your stance on that when uh, she wanted to do some I other think things? the biggest thing is just, you know, I'm one of those guys that always pay attention to the guys around me. So right. the veterans I play with, you know, Shaq, Alonzo Mourning, and mm-hmm. D-Way, all these guys, I watched them put their wife, you know, on a, yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. in a position to be successful. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to remember who it was that told me Gave me this advice, like, man, whatever your girl, whatever your wife want to do, uh-huh. like, support that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because well, what's the problem with another income coming in or right. somebody bringing right. other mm-hmm. opportunities in? So right. from day one, I never felt, you know, any type of way, like, no, I don't want you working. No, I don't want uh-huh. you doing this. I don't want you hanging out with this person, mm-hmm. this and that. I've never been like that because I'm not an insecure person. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I know how my mother was, too. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. She had her hands in a lot of stuff, yeah. doing a lot of stuff. You know, it probably made my dad feel a certain type of way sometimes, mm-hmm. but she was bringing in, you know, her side as well. So yeah. mm-hmm. I'm always going to be supportive supportive of Mia, and, you know, whatever she want to do. And I just feel like that's the way things work, you know, because right. mm-hmm. a, a girlfriend or wife, like she said, they just sit around all day because yeah. there's not much to do. They I mean, don't and then you can take your ass back to where you're from. Because right. that's if what you, you got to that. remember. Um, then you'd be mad you could, when he told you, you, you But I'm just saying, like, a, a, a <laughs> lot of, a lot of, because my, my next question was like, how much of Darrell's job is your job, too? Because technically, and I remember you talking about this a little bit at mm-hmm. a panel that you were hosting, or they were talking about it, and his he has so many things going on in his life mm-hmm. that if he didn't have somewhat of a life manager, which is great mm-hmm. because it's his wife, mm-hmm. a lot of things could be could go array. Yeah. But you you know just as much about the NBA as I do, and I'm on yeah. a Facetime with you sometimes. Like, oh, I gotta watch the Jarrell game. This is she's mm-hmm. speaking some terms I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so how much did you feel like you needed to to get dedicated to what he was doing, learn more, and and do you feel like you're just as much of what he does? Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been a fan of the game. My dad and grandpa are both huge fans of basketball, all sports, baseball, football. Um, so I've always enjoyed the game. Mm-hmm. I think it was important for me from a protective standpoint yeah. to understand the business side, uh-huh. um, to gain financial education that I didn't have, to like be self-taught on things that um, I just needed to understand the how things worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you learn the terminology and once you set a precedence with uh-huh. people that are even working for you, mm-hmm. you see the shift because they're like, oh, okay, she knows she what knows. she's talking about. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no pulling the yeah. wool over the eye yeah. because your man, his, his thing is to focus on his craft, period. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And he, you end up trusting a lot of people that don't have your best interest That's or great. even trusting people that do have your best interest but don't have the capacity mm-hmm. to yeah. manage these things for you. Right. So I think I took it upon myself and you know my mother, right. Michelle yeah. LaFleur. Shout, Shout out to Shout Michelle. Out to Michelle. Shout your out presence to is always It's awesome. always felt, yeah. <laughs> there was no other option for me, right. literally, but to learn and understand this business mm-hmm. the best way that I could to protect my husband, our family, to, you know, make maximize as many opportunities uh-huh. as we could. Um, so yeah, I just, I inherited that responsibility, I kind of, you know, put my big girl panties on uh-huh. and said, I'm going to make sure that my family is straight. Like, but I also, put that as her friend, and not to cut her off, as uh-huh. her friend, you're that type of person. So mm-hmm. it's very, you know, people look at wives and they're like, oh, there's someone's wives, but there's a reason why he picked you for right. that type of position and role in your life. Because mm-hmm. 
he can have any woman and vice versa. Mm-hmm. However, for the position that he's in, it was important that he picked someone like you mm-hmm. that he knew had that capacity and was able to pay attention to detail and really be able to assist in that. Because it's not an easy job that you have. No. Not like just right. wife and mother. It's like, yeah. nah, like what, what y'all got going on over there? Let manager. me make sure. Now, <laughs> now, Diddy, I have a question for you because you're, you are like... In a, you're a very strong woman, so you're in a position of power. And I know that we've talked about, like, your your, your dating life mm-hmm. in the past and, like, some of the, the quarrels that you might have with mm-hmm. men that see you in a position mm-hmm. of power. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, What does your perfect mate look mm-hmm. like to you? Because you, a lot I'm of guys are... To know this well, answer. I mean, I got, a lot of guys are intimidated by you yeah. because you are a lot in many yeah. ways. <laughs> Uh, I love you for it, but you are you you are a boss, a right? You are a boss. Yeah. So how do you deal with dating, you know, other powerful men, and also, you know, finding somebody that fits your lifestyle? I think that you have to, you know, I'm at an age where I understand who I am mm-hmm. and what's important to me and what's important to my world and what I'm actually attracted to. Because sometimes, what you think you're attracted to younger, it's mm-hmm. not really uh-huh. what you're attracted to. So for me, I love an intelligent man. That ha- you have to be smart. You have to be intelligent because you have to teach me something because I spend my days teaching other people. Right. So I need yeah. to have someone, A, that's smart and, and has integrity before anything else. That's All the other handle your mouth because you... Well, I don't have the same that, mouth I, with a mouth man that I'm dealing crazy. with that I have with a you. Ooh, that mouth or, is crazy, y'all. Okay? No, my mouth, no, no, no. I mean everything that come up out Ooh, there. Ooh, that mouth is I'll, like... I mean it all. I'll take none of damn. it. Damn. See, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I like a smart man and I like a man that understands that my life and my role in the world is important and that's not going to change because a man came in my life. Like I have a, a call and I have a purpose and a promise to God that stands before any man that I would potentially be with. And if you're the right man for me and mm-hmm. we do and you understand that and you have you're able to handle that, then we're going to rock out and see what happens. If I not, got, then you going to go. I got somebody for y'all. I'm going to hook you up right I'm after the right. podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm all right. I'm <laughs> so I, 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 Another thing, you know, Miss Diddy is the lifestyle connoisseur here in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, ever since I first got here, I mean, I first got here, I was like, what the fuck does she do? Like, <laughs> I remember that. No, 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 listen, because I was like, who the fuck is Miss Diddy and why does everybody keep telling me I need to know her? And I met her at a party. I was shady to her the first time. I was like, who are you? It was my birthday party. You know, it was her birthday party and I was shady. Because when we were <laughs> yeah, my birthday party at the Roosevelt. We had the Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was just Ooh, like, that was a good night. That was she had, she had Chris birthday. Brown singing her happy birthday and shit. Oh, and I was, was like, who the fuck? It's a good night. Who is this? You know, <laughs> like, it's a good night. you've always seemed to, you know, be able to have a presence in Hollywood. Yeah. But what I loved about that era, and I remember we used to go out to all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a level of like exclusivity. Yeah. And shit before yeah. the gram, the gram ruled everything because now everybody knows where to go. I remember you had to. Right. Right. Like they, like I say, they For said sure. you need to know Miss Diddy so you can go out. Get right. that invite. You need to know this person, person. Him the other you, person so you can go out, right? <laughs> so you basically had to get invited personally yeah. so the party right. was curated yes. by a particular person in crowd. How do you work. like now in today's world where everybody's so you know damn what? important, how do you curate, curate <laughs> your own vibe? Because I know you have the toast to Young Hollywood coming up at the Beverly Hills Hotel. So how do Come you on. curate vibes did for, it in this you know world what? now for me you know i'm a hard worker and that was what it was always about for me yeah. i became a promoter before when passing fly when i had to pass out flyers mm-hmm. right yeah, mm-hmm. straight up. so like you know f- that was what was important for me and the integrity of the party because my reason for staying in nightlife for so long was so that my west coast artists could be like Mm. taken off. Like, mm-hmm. I know that who I'm bringing to the club, right? right and right. they may not even get an email address from the people I'm bringing to the club. Right. But I know if I bring them in YG perform or uh-huh. so, you know, or OT Genesis perform or whatever, then we're going to be good and they're yeah. going to get on and mm-hmm. the culture is going to keep moving and West Coast is going to shine. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, a supper club era was so important. Yeah. But now that I've, like, in a way, like, really uh, retired from nightlife, uh-huh. like, mm-hmm. club, because I knew it was important for me to transition the right way because uh-huh. it's a young man's sport. Right. And I could go as long as I want, but it's like the old girl in the club is not as cool. Yeah, 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 it's like, the, sure. shut up for and sure. don't look I'm at me not. that way. Honestly, no, hey, I'm, I'm, not. I'm, 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 I'm glad you left the club. Because if you were still there like that, no. I might be like, did not nah, look. No, man, I can do it. You know, <laughs> you because, <gotta>. because <laughs> I brought the lifestyle aspect to clubs. Yeah. And even though it was known to people that knew, 
it was important for me to kind of separate that because I never wanted to be the girl that was throwing the party. Right. And you were also mm-hmm. kind of known as, and it's, it's not that I'm calling you a bitch, mm. but you were also, no, it's a good thing, though. Because mm-hmm. to me, I, I like I was, to know the, 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 the one that's the bitch I, at the front. Somebody call me a bitch? No, nobody calls okay. you a bitch. I'm saying in that aspect, a lot of people <laughs> will call still... your ways not letting people in the club. Right. Right. Saying still, who, uh, yeah. who ain't, right. whatever. Yeah. As, oh, she a bitch. Okay, so how, how do you determine who you want in your shit or not. Yeah. And also, you know, do you get scared in the streets? No, what I'm scared for? Like here. No, I'm no, no, I know that, but I'm saying, sometimes you've be told people you can come in the club. I'm scared and shit. about nothing in front of the club. <laughs> I'm really the from here. I'm uh-huh. good on both sides. <laughs> B, C, I the brothers. I feel protected because right. of you, actually. Listen, I'm, and I say, because <laughs> if I ever make a call, if I, my calls, yeah. it's going to shut down Straight the whole up. city. So, like, Straight I did a lot for a lot of people, you know? But for me, it's the intention of the party. Mm-hmm. What is the message of this party? Yep. What is the important fit? piece of this party? Mm-hmm. And do you fit? And, and guess what? This is Hollywood. Right. Yeah. Right. So, like, let's not forget yeah. right. that this is Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing about me, I take care of my people. I don't play that game. Right. I don't Always. care who you are when it right. comes to you Always. being my people. Right. 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 You my friend, you my family. I don't, you could be, you can be the janitor. So right, I'm not right. that type of person. Yeah. But outside of that, when it comes to business, yeah. it has to make sense. Right, right. If he's spending 15K on the table and right. you want to spend seven, you mad. You I don't have nothing here. to do with yeah, that. Yeah, because I didn't, <laughs> no, no, no. Because I just seen her straight leave niggas at the front, turn you know, around, I'm t- and I'm low key like behind her, like, hey, this <laughs> <I>, Right. <laughs> good, and they mad because you know Because I hope that I can get in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you always take care of me. I do. I never know. And I would, and I would, and we will Thank say you. this on camera now. If Thank you, you. <laughs> don't, <laughs> sis. <They know> <laughs> oh. And I got but up six and she was walking back and forth. That's what folks don't understand. I'm tired if you playing games. No, I'm, for I got sure. To go back. For okay. sure, because you got to pretty much manage a whole gang of niggas. A whole gang <laughs> like, of that at that point are just drinking. You got to think, you right. know me, I'm not a drinker or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I'm not with the bottles on top of the table. <laughs> right, right, but right. I'm looking at my promoters. Like, so, so you done working? Right. right. So you done working tonight. <laughs> right. Got it. Finished. So you okay. just, now right. it's a party. Right. And that's yeah. the difference between yeah. what my brand uh-huh. was ended up working. being than a lot of people because for me, it was work. It was, uh-huh. what's the nature of this? Like, mm-hmm. okay, how do we make this bigger? How is this turned into a movie? It wasn't like partying for me. Yeah. That wasn't, mm-hmm. that was no. never my like, mm-hmm. yeah, let's And go I feel party. like people in LA only will go to certain people's shit. Like, yo, for if sure. you got some mm-hmm. type of clout, for your sure. stuff and a right. few yep. others. Mm-hmm. I know y'all travel a lot. So, mm-hmm. and, and you guys are getting ready That's to go on a, a big vacation soon. Mm-hmm. Where's y'all oh favorite God. place to travel and like, what y'all do on vacation? Because I feel like we gotta we get to watch y'all vacation through social media. I mean, me and the rest of the people that's watching. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I can't be there in Ibiza and shit. Right, we just so not wherever get y'all go all the time. Yeah. Uh, where's y'all favorite place to go? And what y'all like to do to turn up? Because Mia is a, is a she turn is up. A- Darrell, how do you, wait. Actually, Darrell. Oh, wow. Darrell, okay. okay. Because before we go there, <laughs> fuck that question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I just got a thought. Because... Yeah. And, and thank you for trusting me with your wife. And you know, I will always <laughs> make sure she's story. safe. Right. Always. So, and because because when cause she you turned know. and drunk, I'm, I have to tone it back a little bit. Right. No, I mean, you get turned, you get lit. It's okay. How, I'm Creole. I do get you lit. You do get lit. That's, I'm that's why proud we love of my you. litness. Yo, how do you how do you deal with that shit? <laughs> yeah. Y'all making me sound. No, no, it's crazy. fun. It's a fun time. But I'm saying, like, you gotta go home with her. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can drop her off. Like, all right, girl, see you tomorrow. Holla. How do you I deal with not. that? To tell you I the truth, not. though, the 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 crazy thing about it. I used to get way more lit than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a yeah, time. Yeah, yes. It yes. was a so time. So you had to be responsible. I had to be the responsible. Right, no, 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 no. <laughs> first off, first off, when we went out, it was a bunch of us. Yeah. So right, right, right. Our friends had to be responsible Correct. because uh-huh. we used to bump heads so much because Ooh. we was both just so lit oh and wasted. God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't miss okay. them days though. Okay. Well, we're both Sagittariuses too. I'm really right. big into astrology uh-huh. and. Um. Yeah. That that liquor brought that alpha way out for the yeah. both of us, and it was like, who's gonna trump who right yeah. now? Like, mm-hmm. who's gonna make this part? You know, I don't know. Just turn to a battle. But y'all still <laughs> have fun though. So when yeah. y'all go on vacation, y'all still and when the kids are around, mm-hmm. which I love y'all's kids. Like y'all's kids <laughs> yes, are like my favorite so kids. Young. Y'all's kids and Lauren's kids mm-hmm. and a few other my friends. Y'all have like this solid set of like good kids that yeah, got like personality so for dope. real. Thanks, like guys. your son, Devin. 
Kevin. <laughs> I, he he po- you posted something. Uh-huh. He he was complaining about patience, and he put right. dash dad. Fr- yeah, he put dash in it, mm-hmm. and he's such a rambunctious he child. <laughs> no, it's the like, way. He- Man, that kid, like, I'm, when, when I'm FaceTiming with you, I'm like, yo, Dash, get out the screen. He, I was like, Daddy, he think I'm thinking uh, yeah. you. Uh-huh. He hears a man, which, which is good. Right, you know, right. right. So, right. right. Um, but, right. but how do y'all how do y'all go and keep it fun being that y'all have such, like, busy lives at home? Because y'all kids run y'all around the clock with basketball practice and yeah, everything else. Too. Y'all are actually involved as parents. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's why we carve out that time to do the vacations, you know, annually without the kids. With we do a big group of us. Um, it's a it's a fun group. You guys will see it. I'm not even gonna shout out. You'll see it on the (laughs) crib. It's a good group. Um but it's important to continue to date each other, Mm -hmm. reinvent individually, um, to respect growth and space. Yeah. Um and then always keeping like the end goal the same. I don't even know really what the question was. But you got it. Me there. You got the. You got to the point. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting hot in here. It so is. what we're gonna do is, <laughs> um, like you. I know. Shut up. No, like you. <laughs> this is a very relaxed program. <laughs> ah, program. Um, yes, program. Mr. Rogers, oh, oh, ass okay. nigga. Um, but you know, this show is called a glory for a reason. I do like to bring my friends and people that I look up to in the business together, and we laugh, we have a good time. But we, you know, we want to like get the message out to people that look up to us mm-hmm. and see us and see us living whatever these lives are and, mm-hmm. and put a story behind it. And mm-hmm. so I like to ask, you know, my guest, uh, I asked you first, Diddy. Okay. Because um, we all have these glory moments in life. Mm-hmm. And, and for you, Darrell, it might be, you know, the first time that you realize that you signed, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, it, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I feel like we got to remember them mm-hmm. and we got to reflect on them. So... Diddy, what has been, and just just do one, what has mm. been one of the biggest glory moments for you when you actually sat and went, wow, like, it's okay, I made it, things are good, and I'm thankful, you mm. know? I don't think I ever had to, I made it, I have, I have had a couple, I'm lying. But, dang, I have I have a couple in mind, one recently, uh-huh. mm. that, um... Give us a recent one, actually, mm-hmm. because we have so many of them, let's all you. give a recent a glory recent. moment. Yeah. yeah, That makes it easier. Yeah. Dang, but no... <laughs> Sis, I'm gonna go back to moment. no, no, because <laughs> no way. I was I was honored by the Senate recently, but I, mm-hmm. a Senate in San, St. Louis. But I'm gonna give. I'm not gonna give that one. I'm gonna actually give the one where you and I sold our first television show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now, even though it didn't go the way we thought it was supposed to go, yeah. we literally together, just mm-hmm. you and I went in and sold a whole television show to a major network yes, and did. got a green lit in a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was my moment as a young businesswoman sure. to mm-hmm. understand like, mm-hmm. okay, wait, 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 hold on. Mm-hmm. Like, I no longer am going to walk in a room and right. you could try to tell me that I can't do something or right, what right, I right. want to do. You can't because right. we, we would be up Early in the morning, putting this together. Mm -hmm. Coffee, computer, can't nobody. We both are early birds. Mm -hmm. You know, 7 a.m. Like, we went to the coffee shop. And you still would get up, (laughs) even if you was up drinking, because you was drunk the day we (laughs) sold the show. I was drunk. You was hungover (laughs) the next day we sold the show. (laughs) But that meant so much to me as a young businesswoman, because I didn't know that I would venture into business as much as I have at that point. But at that point, I felt like... Yeah, nah. I'm 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 Wakanda forever. I'm walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn yeah, every right. meeting. I'm turned. Like Straight up. what you what? Nah, actually, it was a this shift. is how it's going. It was a right. shift. It right. was a it shift. Was. What about for you, Darrell? What was your what was a glory moment for you recently? Uh, I don't really have any. Or you were one of your first glory moments. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest biggest thing is that what we did uh, for the people in Oakland for uh, mm-hmm. thanks with that Thanksgiving, right? Mm-hmm. And we were able City to Oakland. yeah, we were mm-hmm. able to feed. Uh, Five thousand. Amazing. Wow, that's amazing. So just being in a room with so many people that's just so less fortunate yeah. right. and stuff like that, just it was the most humbling thing I've ever done. You know, of course, Mia played a big part in that as mm-hmm. far as getting it done, mm-hmm. getting the information about it, and just walking around that room, all the people were so thankful right. and yeah. so grateful, you know, that we were able to continue. I think it was the 20th year, and the city didn't have the funds, and we stepped up. Wow. And we uh, were able to, you know, con- let it continue. So I think that was the most humbling thing that I've, I've done uh, this far. So that's that's, that's the one that stick out the most for wow. me, for sure. What about you, Mia? 
This is a tough question. Here we <laughs> go. This, I mean, I'm just saying there's yeah, so many the areas moment. of life. Like, mm-hmm. do I yeah. want to go family? Yeah. And like, do I want to go business? I think for me, I, I want, <clears throat> it needs to be personal. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to know what you did as if personally when you were like, wow, like that was an accomplishment for myself that I can take in and be proud of. Um, I would well if we're gonna go recent, I will say, and it's so funny because a friend of mine, I'm not gonna put her name on blast, uh-huh. but she's gonna know after she sees this because she was like, "Girl, it was a brunch." Like right. no, the no, way no, that exactly what you're right. saying. Yeah. <laughs> so no, but to me, for most recently, um, MBWA had our yes. first annual Women's Empowerment Summit. I'm so proud. You were there. So proud. You were there. So proud. It was in Germany. You were in Germany working. <laughs> it was working. Um, but it was a panel conversation about women changing the game in sports. It featured Cookie Johnson, Aisha Curry, Jada Paul, Lane Baylor, Tracy Wilson Morning, Adrian Bosch. Um, and it was moderated by Gail King. Man. Right. Um, and Power. the room was so powerful mm-hmm. and I think people just weren't expecting the women to open up the way that they did Mm -hmm. and to Mm -hmm. be so vulnerable, Uh to be so articulate and intelligent, Uh um, and to really give a different light of who we are, you know, in this game, um, next to these men, next to our men. Um, And then to have Congresswoman Maxine Waters come up and feel compelled to speak. Yeah, she was reclaiming her time. Right. Um, It was... I felt like, oh, wow, Mm -hmm. okay. Like, I could take an idea, a seed, and really develop it and make it, like, a thing that affects people, you know, and just the all the positive affirmations and, you know, emails and calls that I received after it. And uh, thank my board for helping me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But it it started with an idea. And I think any time you take a seed Mm -hmm. and you see it manifest to be bigger than what you even expected it to be, it, that is, it's glorious. Yeah, like absolutely, yeah. that brunch was that brunch was dope. Yeah, I remember at that time we had me and Diddy. We, we had just lost our friend Leah, yeah. and like I remember mm-hmm. coming to that brunch and being tough. like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, like, good mm-hmm. energy, good yeah. vibes in here." And I was so proud of you because of the way you led. You led with grace, yes. and I, I, I think that everybody in this room, from what I've seen in your professional career, your professional career, you know, you had these glory moments where you realized. Independence. That's what we talked about mm-hmm. in the last one, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you did that, whether whether yours was on or off the court, you said, look, I can do this right. for yeah. myself and I can help other people. So your glory came in helping other people. Mm-hmm. And yours came in having independence within self and yours had and come, having independence within, you know, uh, as a businesswoman, mm-hmm. you know, and like, mm-hmm. and, and that was the first big venture that you had done in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm What's glad. What's yours? I'm, yeah. You, know what? you need Come to on, have D. one every you time. You know what? So Honestly, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. My recent glory moment was creating this because yeah. the lad, the prior to this, yeah. I was, uh, yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> prior to this, I was hosting uh, for Extra and all those outlets, and I, I felt like, I was being suffocated because I couldn't talk about this shit. Mm-hmm. What we talk about or say shit, uh-huh. <laughs> and I felt like I was turning into another person, and I was and I was growing outside of the camera as a different person, mm. and going through things in the past couple of months. So I really felt like it was important for people to come and share their moments, especially people of power like we all are. Own your power and shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So with that being said, I thank you guys for coming on the podcast. I hope to have you back. Of Y'all course. better come back. Thank you, Miss Diddy. Us. You have the toast to Young High. Hollywood. Yeah, um, that'll next be Wednesday. next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. June 20th. Um, that's going to be really, really big It's going to be you. amazing. Um, mm-hmm. And Darrell, you, you're going to continue playing basketball, of course. Yep, You've been in sure. the league 11 years. We we know we're going to see more of you. Mm-hmm. And what you got coming up? Ooh. You got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> she got a summer. <laughs> Y'all know I always have like tricks up my sleeve. Yeah, yeah, because the summer part. she had done. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not. Here's the thing about me. I don't. I don't do too much of a plug. I just do a presentation. Like no. when right, things, you gonna present. When right. things are ready. What's in the near future? For in you? the near future, though, I, well, I will go MBWA because we okay. do have our second annual Women's Empowerment Summit. We'll be in Charlotte for All Star Weekend, so that's in Great. February. That's going to be major for sure. Um, and then just okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm oh working God. on and focusing on personal projects that I want to start doing, uh-huh. which include screenwriting, right. developing shows, show running. Okay. So I've been doing my Shonda Rhimes masterclass. Okay. All right. Shout out to Jenny G from Blackish, producer, yes. executive producer, Grownish. That's my cousin mentor um, yes. showing me the ropes. But yeah, that's what's in my trick bag. 
Good shit. Yeah. Good shit. Well, <laughs> uh, first of all, we want to thank Groundwork Studios where we filmed this. Uh, they have been amazing to us. We want to thank our lovely sponsor, Champion, who continues to keep us fly all the time. Mm -hmm. And we'd also like to thank Miss Didion for bringing her Duce in. Come so, on, Duce. Yeah. Shout out to Duce as well. <laughs> and Miss Diddy, the new, the, the, the new national lifestyle that? manager for Duce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, it's been real. That's the glory. And... Uh, Keep your life glorious and shit. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs>